welcome to Faith Groups. This is the third installment of Faith Groups for the second Sunday in Lent. And as we explained during the homily, we always read the same way that on the first Sunday in Lent we read about the temptations in any of the three um, synoptic traditions, Mark, Matthew or Luke, the one that corresponds to the cycle. The same thing happens with the transfiguration that we read this episode, this scene from any of the three Gospels that have it. Uh, you know, Mark, Matthew and Luke follow the same timeline. timeline, And and it's very interesting to reflect about why why do we read the Transfiguration. And and, and one, one thing is that the, the season begins with us receiving ashes and repent or change and believe in the Gospel, right? So the transfiguration is, is this idea of change, this, this change that Jesus experienced. That's something that we want to experience also. But it's very interesting that the gospel makes the point that Jesus is speaking with Elijah and Moses about uh, the exodus that he's going to complete in, in Jerusalem, which is our exodus. It's a very interesting word. It means this, this way out, this pilgrimage, this journey toward Jerusalem. That is the same thing we do during Lent, a reference to the pilgrimage of the people of Israel for one generation in the desert, a, a reference also to our own journey of Lent, as we are also marching towards Jerusalem, where the events of, of Holy Week, the, the Paschal Mystery, the, the Passion, Death and Resurrection of Jesus will happen. So I believe that's the reason why, why we read it. Then, Easy to reflect about this is a glorious moment for Jesus and I'm sure he resorted to this moment later when he's suffering, when he's uh, tempted once again in the Garden of Olives where the disciples fall asleep there the way that they fall asleep today. And it's a moment of glorious for Jesus but also he also can see uh, with disappointment I suppose how little the disciples seem to get him. And there are so many clues in the Gospel today. They fell asleep. Uh, Peter didn't know what he was saying that's what the gospel says very clearly uh, Peter wants to place and will speak about these people uh, Jesus wants to place Jesus uh, wants to freeze that moment and to place Jesus along to buy, build a tent one for Elijah, one for Moses and one for Jesus I, I think we call this syncretism in English, right? when everything, everything is the same and, and and that's not true. The voice from heaven will interrupt Jesus, will interrupt Peter, my apologies, and will say, uh, this is my beloved. This is the chosen one. This is the, the one you need to listen to. And, and if the voice says this, it's because the disciples are failing to, to listen to Jesus. Uh, applications for our life. Uh, I, in the questions today, you will see, uh, we, we do live lives that, that combine moments of glory with moments of, of disappointment. And, and many times we may feel misunderstood by those around us. Imagine how, how Jesus felt here. What is very true is that Jesus, despite the lack of understanding of the disciples, he will take them to Jerusalem. After this, they go down the mountain and there we go on the way to, to Jerusalem. Also, I, I believe what, what Peter does, which is to, to try to frame Jesus in the categories. In philosophy, we say categories. In the framework, in the box that, that he understood, right? The prophets and the, and the law and the prophets, Moses and Elijah. And for me, that means that Peter is trying to understand Jesus in these terms that, that he knew. And Jesus is always new. Jesus is, is always someone who will break through our ideologies, prejudgments, uh, the way we've always done things, this sense of novelty that the, that the disciples struggle with and we may struggle with uh, as well. So that's the, for me the reflection about the, the transfiguration. What a great moment of Jesus, our own uh, horizon, the, the goal to, 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 to get transfigured during Lent, but also when, when our time on earth finishes, um, that's, that becomes our goal and our horizon. But at the same time, to see the, the misunderstanding and the difficulties, the struggles of the disciples, where we may feel very much the same, that we, that we fail to understand Jesus, that we try to fit him also within our political ideas or within our understanding of life. And Jesus is always asking, 
us to be new, to be to re-understand him in, in, in new ways. Uh, I mentioned in the homily, especially Sunday, because today is the ninth anniversary of the election of Pope Francis as the Holy Father. And he preached yesterday for the 400th anniversary of, of St. Ignatius of Loyola. St. Ignatius um, of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, and the, the Holy Father is a Jesuit, and, and, and it's the first time a Jesuit uh, becomes the, the Holy Father. He preached to the Jesuits in the Jesu, in the, in the Church of the Jesuits in Rome, and, and he told them that, that Jesuits are sent to, to minister precisely in these places where glory and doubt and difficulty, the, the, the same glory and the same difficulties we see in today's gospel, that's where our people are, and that's where we have to, to minister, so solidify the, the faith of others. Um, Ignatius famously said the same way that St. Catherine said, be who you are meant to be, and, and, and maybe that's another or their message of the of the transfiguration. How do we come? How do we become that? And one of the things we may need to do is to remove all these obstacles in terms of ideologies. This this framework in which we try to play Jesus, the way that Peter did. I, I want to think that the disciples understood later, and and we know they understood later. But but maybe when they saw him hanging on a cross, when all their dreams of of power and political liberation had had fled. Maybe they remember that day. Maybe they, they remember that day and they knew that this man that they saw suffering on the cross was also of divine nature, the Son of God. And, and that's a, a great message for us as well. We, we capture the, 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 the glory of today and it will help us to get through the most difficult times. I hope the questions help to continue this, our journey in Lent. And I hope these faith groups is helping you to, to get deeper in the living out of the season. Thank you, take care, bye.